Today, I'm gonna show you the five best tips and tricks to buy a graphics card safely in 2022. Now recently all the big tech tubers are talking about it because that article came out where they were like don't buy mining GPUs secondhand or whatever. It's all poppycock if you will. I've been buying mining cards for a decade now. They're totally fine. There's no problem with them. And these five tips that I'm going to give you work for mining cards and non-mining cards alike. And if you follow the five tips, you will be just fine. Tip number one. It's really simple. Just buy the card off of eBay. Now, if you buy the card off of eBay, you can pretty much ignore the other four tips because eBay always sides with the buyer when it comes to purchasing protection. What does that mean? That means you can go and you can buy a card. Even if it is a scam, you get the, the box or whatever. You get some graphics card that you bought. You have 30 days, I believe, or more to test that card out and you can refund it and return it hassle-free. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but even if the seller puts no returns accepted, you can still return it. All you have to do is put defective card and eBay will always give you your money back. So what you do, you go when you buy the card, you get the card and you stress test it as hard as possible for the next week or two. You just put fur mark on that shit. It doesn't matter. You just stress it out. And if it doesn't blow up, you're Gucci. And if it does blow up, sounds like the seller's problem. On that token, if you are selling graphics cards, eBay takes it a little too extreme in that regard, where the buyer can actually send you back a different graphics card and get refunded and just scam you. So if you're selling graphics cards, avoid eBay like the plague. Buyer always buy eBay, seller never sell eBay. Now eBay isn't an option. Okay, so now you gotta do Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. This brings us to tip number two. Now, when conversing with the seller, you need to just straight up ask them, are you okay with me coming to your house? And are you okay with me testing the card? Now, why do you want to go to their house besides just testing the card? Because if the person allows you into their home, they are letting you know where they live. There's no shady business there. Right away, you know the card is 99.9% .9 chance not a scam. Now, I understand that as a seller, it may be uncomfortable for people to come into your house like strangers. That's totally fine and that's fair. Now, from the perspective of the buyer, which is us, that's just what I do because then I know if I have a problem with that card, I know exactly where that guy lives and I'm getting my money back, right? Which has never happened in all the time I've been Craigslisting. And you also have to keep in mind, currently in 2022 right now, it is a buyer's market, not a seller's market. So if some guy out there insists on a Starbucks meetup, cash only, no testing of the card, sorry, dude, I'm going to a different person because there's a guy charging $5 more than you that's going to let me into his house. It's as simple as that. If you are buying a used AMD graphics card, only get the 6,000 series ones. Do not get 5,000, don't get Vega, don't get Polaris, only get the 6,000 ones. 6,600 and up. Those ones are cheap enough now where you can afford any price range. And those ones are new enough that you know you're not gonna have any problems with them. They are all also so efficient that even if they were mined on for Ethereum, they don't pull any power and they don't get hot. So you don't even have to worry about that with the AMD cards at all. Now, NVIDIA, if you are buying Turing 2000 series cards, make sure that he shows you that the GPU Z says Samsung memory on it. If you are buying 3000 series cards, NVIDIA kind of did the work for us on that one. Just ask for LHR variants. That's all. It will say LHR in GPU-Z on the very top. Now, these cards were not sought after by miners. And even if they were, the LHR variants came halfway through the generation of the 3000 series. So they have half the time mining on them than the regular ones do. Also, all miners actively sought after the non-LHR version. So if someone is advertising non-LHR, 
they're probably a minor, which is fine, but there's just no point in going for those when the LHR ones are newer and fresher. You know what I'm saying? Now the GDDR6X cards, the 3070 Ti and up, there is a little bit more nuance to that story. But don't let that scare you. We have a ton of miners in my community here. We all mine. Um, but we are, we take care of our hardware, right? We've changed all the pads with the best pads. They don't go above 70 Celsius. We have also seen degradation on cards that have not been padded, right? So if you're, again, the, the LHR is a good place to start. Which brings us to tip number four, avoid 3090s unless they've been water blocked or they're from EVGA or a manufacturer that allows transferable warranty, okay? The only reason the 3090 is the exception is because it has memory on the back of the card and most people didn't cool that at all. Uh, let me go show you something here. So this is my 3090 mining rig right here. It's a water cooled one, right? But you can see that these cards are all water cooled on the fronts and the backs, right? Active back plate, active back, this is 20 HDI, active back plate, right? The problem is there's no way for you to know how well the card was taken care of, right? But if it has a water block on it, the guy is usually gonna be kind of an enthusiast in the first place. Most people that water block their cards are gamers. They're not this crazy shit. There's not this crazy mining shit, right? So water block is a good way to go, which actually brings us to tip number five. Look for graphics cards ads that say optional water block with it or comes with water block. The reason being exactly as it was before. Cards that are underwater will literally last forever because there's no temperature fluctuations on those cards. So the best ones to go for are the ones that are water blocked or have been water blocked. Now you don't have to buy the water block. You're just looking for the ad that says, you know, extra water block for 50 bucks or whatever. Those are the ones you wanna go for. Now bonus tip here, it's very important. Seems pretty common sense, but trust your gut. Humans have an innate ability to sense when something is wrong or off about another human being. So if you're in a situation where something doesn't feel right about the card that you're holding in your hand or the guy that you're talking to on Facebook or Craigslist, just say, thank you for your time. You'd be very polite. You say, thank you for your time. I'll think about it. I'll get back to you. And you leave the situation. It's as simple as that. You never have to feel pressured to buy anything. Now, last thing I'm gonna talk about, I know it's whatever tip number seven, degradation can be random a lot of the time. So just because a card is a regular GDDR6, it doesn't mean it can't fail. This card here I have here is a 3060 Ti Vision. This one failed on me after about five months of mining. What happened with this one was, the memory slider was up to like plus 1500 and every week it would go down a hundred. And if I put it any higher, it would crash. Now this card crashes on minus 1000 memory. I'm sending it in for RMA. But what we have here is I can show you exactly how to test to see if a card has degraded. So if you're in the guy's house and you're testing out the card for yourself, how do you test to see if it's degraded? I'm gonna go show you, let's go upstairs. Okay, so the card is plugged in here. Everything on GPU-Z shows up just fine. See, this one's even an LHR one, so it's actually relatively new. So everything works fine in Windows. You would never think that this card has actually degraded on first glance. So let's actually run the miner and watch what happens when I try and run the miner. It will actually come up with a memory error in red on the right here because it can't actually load the DAG file properly. That's how far this one has degraded. So this is actually one way to check. See how it comes with an exclamation mark here? Completely bone stock, right? It will actually crash the entire uh, PC if I let it go do its thing, right? So that's one way you can check, but I'm not sure if the guy wants you to run mining software at his house, right? So what you can do instead is you can load up TimeSpy 
and you want to use graphics test number two. This is the one that heats up the memory by a lot, right? Um, and you want to only run time spy number two and you want to loop it. So it will constantly loop and heat up the memory as much as possible. And you're actually going to see it artifact. I don't think it's going to do it. I think it'll actually just crash right away because this one has degraded so far. But let's just see what happens here. You should be able to see the artifact on the screen before it actually crashes. And the artifacts will get worse as the card heats up. So let's see here. Yeah, you see that? It looks like uh, like you're on an acid trip, right? And then as the, as the card heats up and heats up, it's just going to get worse. There it is. It just crashed. So anyway, if you were at the guy's house and this shit happened, you'd be like, uh, yeah, I'm good, bro. I'm, I'm good. Thanks for your time, man. And that's it, guys. Follow the guide and you're going to be sitting pretty with a nice $500 3080 Ti that will last you till the end of time. Anyway, guys, hope you learned some. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below your experience when you've bought a mining card before. Did it work? Did it not work? Was it a successful buy? Did it fail on you a month after? Let's find out. Comment down below and we'll figure it out. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later.